I want to thank you all for dropping in and taking a look at the Trim King Fixed Bridge Vibrato. Some of you may know what it is, some of you may not. I also want to thank Numubu for uh, setting up this gear expo and making all this possible. I think this is really the wave of the future and the way we're going to really be able to demonstrate our products to a, to a whole lot more people and get everybody's good opinion on everything. Now, let me show you what the Trim King Vibrato is. It's the first new thing that's come along in, in, in a whammy bar for electric guitar in a long time. Instead of a, uh, a fixed bridge with a moving tone block that wiggles, which is what, uh, you know, a lot of the guitars have, a floating bridge, Trim King uses a fixed bridge with a moving tone block. So you have all the uh, advantages of a fixed bridge immediately, more tone and sustain uh, on any guitar you put it on because the bridge is firmly fixed to the body. Nothing moves on top of the guitar. Everything happens on the inside. This is a, a mock-up of a body we did and you can see on the inside is where it, the action actually happens. So, the Trim King Fixed Bridge Vibrato. The advantages of using this is, because it's a fixed bridge, you can actually play everything you play on a fixed bridge guitar, uh, double stop bends, uh, open notes with bends on other strings. Uh, nothing's going to go flat because nothing can pull forward. The, 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 the tone block is, is held at a zero point, and until you touch the whammy bar, nothing moves. So when you, when you do little bends like that, your held note's not going to go flat. Open notes with bends on other strings won't go flat, but still, great whammy action. This is one put on a, uh, this is a TKS-1 uh, Strat style. Um, we have uh, three different versions. Uh, the, 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 the version for a Strat style body uh, that kind of looks like a vintage trim, shaped like it and everything. Uh, we have left hand models available uh, in, in all three versions. The TK-2 is obviously for a tele style guitar with a bridge mount pickup. Uh, they all function the same way, use a spring cavity. So on a Telecaster you've got to put in a spring cavity. We do a top route, spring cavity, pocket route for the movement of the tone block. So there's some alterations you have to do to your guitar. We also have a third style, the TK3. Uh, it's for other body shapes. Uh, we've used it on Ibanez style bodies, uh, uh, PRS style bodies, different different style bodies. Uh, it functions the same way, still needs a cavity, uh, works the same way. Uh, been working with Music Man a little while and we developed a seven string. So now we've got a seven string version for the Trim King available as well. Um, now, the installation of this, as I showed you, the tone block swings in a normal Strat body. There is only a 20 millimeter slot here that's called a pocket route on the inside of this to widen the area of the guitar. Obviously, for a Telecaster, you've got to do the top route, spring cavity, the pocket route. I developed uh, templates to do all this work. Uh, a tele top route is a center line, intonation point on it, symmetrical spring cavity to go, it locates on the back on this hole, and then you drill your spring cavity. And then you come back in on the spring cavity and do your pocket route for that widening. So these, these templates are available from us as well if you like to do it yourself. We also do installations. Uh, we've got a show deal uh, today right now. Call us at 866-324-6300, toll free. 
Uh, we'll fix you up with one of these installation specials. Um, it's a, usually a three-day turnaround when we do an install. You ship it to us. We'll do the routing, uh, seal up the guitar, let it set. Uh, we'll install the unit the next day, tighten it all up, let it set. Next day, make all the adjustments and uh, let her rip. It's ready to go. So normally a three-day turnaround. If you send us your guitar for an install, we'll give you a great deal. Um, Stream breakage. So... The, the advantage of the Trim King, as I said, you know, here you can really see what, what's in here, and you'll see that there is a tension bar back here. You'll notice there's only two springs. One is in the middle and goes to the tension bar. The other is on the tone block. The strings load like normal in the tone block and naturally pull the tone block backwards. The tension bar is an opposing force pulling this way. So these two opposing forces hold the tone block at the zero point until you move the whammy bar. When you bend a string, nothing moves. Uh, if you break a string, you will stay in tune. Uh, you can drop tune without retuning. It, it, it's, a, it's a substantial force on it right there. but very smooth to roll through to get that true vibrato. Um, I've got a question. What's the question? The question, first question we have is how long in average does it take to set up if you do it yourself? Um, setup's really pretty easy once you once you understand the Trim King. As I said, you've got opposing pressures back here and people's intuition tells them to move the screws the same way. They're actually opposite. Um, once you understand it, setup is not hard. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go through a basic kind of setup and show you how you know, uh, set up in 15 minutes or something. Of, uh, the string, the, the spring, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, removing the harness bar, setting your radius and intonation, locking the harness bar back on, and, and you're ready to go. Also, go through a kind of a tuning method uh, that is a little bit different, but uh, but works real well on the Trim King. I hope that answered your question. N not very long. Uh, Installing it yourself, if you're handy with a router, you can do it. We use plunge routers. We, we're actually maybe going to route a guitar today, too, and show you how we do it and what we do. So stay tuned, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll show you kind of all that stuff. I just wanted to <coughs> introduce the Trim King a little bit here. Uh, so those familiar, unfamiliar with it would, would realize it's, it is really something different. It's a fixed bridge whammy bar, kind of an oxymoron, but uh, fairly easy to set up, just, uh, just a little different. Actually, it's, it's real simple. Once you kind of get the feel of it, it's a very simple mechanism. Uh, let's, let's listen to it. We're going to move the camera a little bit here. So... Uh, Stay with us. Get my bald head in there. So uh, this guitar is all kind of set up and ready. Signal is too hot. Oh, is that too loud? Yeah, I just yeah. 
did a down bend, let it come up, and then did an up bend. A bit lower. And you can see, still perfectly in tune. Lower still. Now see what I was talking about too, like uh, double stop bends. That note's not gonna go flat when you when you do a double double stop bend. Nothing goes flat uh, because it's a fixed bridge. Everything's fixed to the body and nothing can move. Unless you want. So what I was going to tell you about tuning the Trim King too, it's a little different to tune it. I always use the whammy bar as I tune it. So here's the method I use. I got a tuner here hooked up. Uh, hit the string, hit the whammy bar, let it come back up, and tune to pitch. Up, down, it stays on pitch. Go to the next string. And then one time through the strings, you're all tuned. It's not a balancing act like with floating tremolos where you have to go back and forth and back and forth. You should be all tuned and ready to... Also, if you want to drop tune, watch this. You could do that with retune one string and have everything stay in. Can you drop it into a Floyd cavity? Well, um, that's a good question. Because the Trim King needs a flat place to mount, if you have a newer style Floyd that has a top route, we can't do it. Uh, the cavity is so big and it it uh, they're all they all vary a little bit or or we try to make some kind of uh, mount that goes in there, but the answer is really no. Uh, it, it needs a flat place to mount. Likewise, if you have a, a arch top body, it's not going to work. It needs a it needs a flat place to mount uh, because it does mount firmly to the bridge. Thanks for that question. Does it work on a banjo? Does it work on a banjo? Of course. Never put one on there, but uh, we put one on an acoustic guitar. Uh, Graph Tech, let me tell you this. Uh, Graph Tech has been our partner since the beginning. We love those guys. Uh, in fact, this uh, the inventor of the Trim King is my partner, and he's a Canadian. Um, and from the very first, he used Graph Tech material as the saddle pins. Um, <clears throat> we, we first started using their, their nut material, uh, but... We've changed a couple of times, and and uh, but we still use a, a lot of Graph Tech material. We uh, suggest a Graph Tech nut. You don't need a locking nut. Um, this guitar has uh, just regular. Uh, well, actually, these are locking Wilkinsons with the double holes in it. 
A locking tuner is nice. Uh, this guitar actually has an eight degree angle on the headstock too, so uh, there's no string trees necessary. But it's fine with string trees. We do recommend uh, that you use uh, Big Ben's nut sauce um, when you change strings and on your nut and saddles and under the string trees. Uh, that's really the only lubrication that we recommend uh, for the trim. <laughs> Tune it back up. So you hit the string, hit the whammy bar, tune your pitch. Right then, here. Right here it says Eric Johnson would go nuts if he saw this. Well, Eric Johnson has seen this, um, and uh, Eric, you know, Eric lives here in Texas. We're in Texas. Uh, Eric's down in Austin, and and we've talked to him about this before, and he is very interested in it. We just haven't connected yet. Um, I put one on a guy's Eric Johnson Strat the other day, and man, that was a beautiful Strat, and it worked flawlessly on that thing, and uh, so <clears throat> Eric will be the second one <laughs> to get it on an Eric Johnson Strat. And the E went to an E when we dove. On the, Eric, on the Eric Johnson. Oh, yeah, I did. On the Eric Johnson one, we did, man, it... Depending on the route, you know, every retrofit is a little bit different, but depending on the route, it'll go way down. And this bar seems kind of high, um, but it can be bent right here to be lower to the body if all you really do is, is a little shimmer vibrato. If you really want to dive bomb in, you can turn the bar around and pull it up. Now, another thing about our bar is uh, it's a little bit different. This is our patented grip tip. It's a little rubber tip on the bar. You'll notice the bar goes all the way down to the body. So it doesn't want, we don't want to harm the body, but it's also a great little thing to grab with your little finger, palm it. Gives you something to really kind of grab onto there. Besides us, where can you get them? Um, we've got a lot of dealers around. Uh, uh, huh? HD. Um, HD custom... Supply is a uh, is a great dealer of ours. Um, you'll find them scattered around on eBay through different dealers. Uh, Josh uh, Munter, HD uh, but Josh Munter is a great guy. Uh, Norm at Norm's Music. Uh, where's Norm up in uh, New Hampshire or somewhere? <coughs> he's uh, he's great. Come on board with it. Uh, we've got a lot of luthiers around the country. As a matter of fact. Uh, uh, Oh, I can't think of their name, but they're a custom guitar maker out of uh, uh, Kentucky, and they built the Bullets and Bones guitar for Joe Perry, and they sent that guitar to us to have uh, a Trim King put on it. Joe Perry requested it. After that, we probably did five other guitars of Joe's uh, for an installed Trim Kings on them. He used them for uh, that year during the tour. That was uh, uh, two, two years ago. Trace Foster, the, uh, the tech for Joe Perry, uh, just, I mean, he, he said, man, you've made my life easy. He said, Joe beats the hell out of these guitars. And when they come back off stage, they're, they're, they're still in tune. So, you know, he, he was loving it. And with the ease of setup, the maintenance, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're not going to have to readjust these springs unless you change gauge of strings or something like that. Uh, so it, it works really, uh, really easily once you've got it on the guitar. There's a few different things like, Changing strings, we recommend you change one string at a time because when you take all the strings out, this tone block spring is going to pull the block forward, and with a normal back plate on here, you can't get to the holes. So if you change them one at a time, it works better, unless you want to take the back plate off, do some other you know, adjustments on your guitar. Normal back plate will cover cover the route. As you notice on this guitar, we this is a, this is what you normally see on the back of a Strat, except this is kind of a short cavity to tell you the truth. But um, we leave the original integrity of the hole the same and go down beneath the guitar to make this pocket route to allow for that movement of the tone block. We have a question wanting to know wanting to know if you have an old style trim arm. Uh, yeah, we have like just a straight arm um, that has no uh, tip, no grip tip on it. Uh, 
just a straight arm with no tip. And like I say, these are bent at a pretty big angle. Uh, we put these in a vise and bend this down to make it comfortable. Uh, never cracks the plating. It's very good plating. Um, and you can put a plastic tip on here if you like. Uh, and this is actually, yeah, this is the long bar. We have a short bar, too, that's about an inch shorter than this. This is actually the about the third generation of the Trim King. The original had a shorter arm on it. It had a, it was designed a little different. We've changed the design a little bit just to upgrade things over the years, smooth out the operation, and uh, you know make it work better. We we listen to all you guys that that call us and write us about all this stuff, uh, and we do have a lot of professionals out there that are using this uh, on on the road uh, and 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 loving it. So. Yeah. They want to know if, you, if the plastic tip on a fender can go onto that. Yeah, it'll slip right on there. The plastic tips will slip right on there. It's the same, same, same size. But this is a push-in bar. It just pushes in uh, to the tone block. There's a Delrin sleeve right here. And you'll notice ours fits in between the E and the B saddle. Now, another cool deal. If you uh, if you play acoustic or like a like acoustic stuff, uh, Graph Tech, kind of one of our partners, will also make their Ghost system in a saddle that fits our bridge. So you can install the Ghost system and have the Piezo system in your guitar, and it sounds amazing. Uh, but Graph Tech will make saddles for you and you can put piezo in it too. This here's a Fender Nashville Tele that we uh, we install this in. You can see the uh, spring cavity there on the back that we put in. And this is our symmetrical design. We still go back in and do the pocket route. You know you could just bore out this whole section but it makes people nervous and stuff. So <laughs> we designed it to go down inside there and leave the original integrity of that hole the same. But uh, this works beautifully on this Telecaster here. And, and we refuse to put them in vintage guitars. Yeah, you know, we've, we, we've been asked a couple of times to put them in something vintage. And, and, and to put them in, you know, not just vintage guitars. I kind of refuse to put them in something that they won't go in. Like a guy earlier asked about a Floyd. That guitar was designed to have a Floyd in it, and it's probably a darn good guitar, and Floyds are great, and they they really they have their niche, and that guitar's made for it. I'd leave it like that. I'd get another guitar. Hey, how many guitars do you need? Just one more. That's always the answer. So, you know, uh, get another guitar that's a better candidate for the Trim King. Uh, you know, nowadays, uh, everything's so available as far as bodies and necks and uh, and guitars themselves too. So uh, I said everything better and better. What's better and better? The Trim King. Oh. Um well and we were going to show you some of the installation. Now I, I didn't talk about setting up the Trim King um when you want to do your, uh, after you have it installed. Now, the way I, first thing you're going to do, put it in, get the strings in, make sure this is tight on this zero point right here. How I, how you make it tight is to screw this screw all the way in and let this screw back. That allows string pressure to pull the tone block back. The tension bar is pressing forward. There's actually leather in between this uh, this metal, and that's what keeps it from making noise. And that leather will seat overnight. So the first day you install a Trim King, we suggest you tighten everything up and let it sit overnight. In fact, I just went through this with a guitar. I, I have to listen to my own advice. Uh, you have to wait uh, a day and let it let that leather seat. Then you can come back and adjust it. And the oh, I took the bar out. <laughs> 
The way I adjust it is just to simply press the bar down, let it come back up, let it come back up until I can just remove my hand from it. And the tension bar should be seated firmly against those two arms so that when I follow through and, and pull the tone block on up, the tension bar stays where it is. Conversely, you pull it up and let it go down slowly until you can just remove your hand from the bar and the tone block should be seated firmly against the tension bar so that when you follow through and press, everything moves as one. So it's a real, actually, simple setup as far as the springs, uh, getting the spring tension. Um, I usually recommend filing your nut, making sure it's all clean. We recommend a graft hack nut. Uh, after you get the adjustment done, you come in and you remove this harness bar here. This is the only locking thing on the guitar. You remove that. Then you can get to the saddle screws and set your intonation and set your radius. Then you lock the harness bar back on and you're ready to whammy. Most of the time you can remove the string trees. Yeah, and a lot of times, especially the string trees on the D and the G, uh, they're hardly ever necessary. And a lot of times you can get away with not using the string trees on your E and B. If you want to leave them on there, great. They'll work with it. Uh, we have another person that wants to know where he can buy these, which directly from us. You can buy them directly us. from us. Uh, you can buy them directly from us. We have a toll-free number, 866-324-6300. Uh, or go to the Trim King website t-r-e-m-k-i-n-g dot com and um, you can buy them off of there call us direct uh, we have installation specials uh, and an HD custom guitar I believe they're selling them uh, uh, all over just look them up on the web um, there's we got luthiers all over the United States that are using them uh, we've got some major, uh, Michael Tobias uh, has started a new guitar line uh, called MTD. The Rubicon model has the TK3 on it in black nickel. It's very beautiful. Um, and then there's a few other companies we're starting to work with. Uh, Tradition Guitars uses the Trim King on its guitars. Um, but you can buy them directly from us if you want to buy the unit. The templates are available. I even sell the router bits. Uh, that that are that are needed for it. Um, we we thought about showing you some of the routing uh, if you want to see it. Uh, and we've got a few minutes here, so uh, let's uh, let's flip around here and and do some do some uh, some work here. Oh, there's my bald head. Okay, <clears throat> there's a body on our router table that. Uh, that we've already marked up. What we do, uh, of course, I, I, I like to have a neck on here, and uh, we'll, we'll have a neck on this guitar, but mark the intonation point. And this will show you is how we route the top of it. And I have like I say, we just use plunge routers. Um, now it's going to get real noisy, okay? Beautiful. Okay, so 
what we did, as you can see, uh, the hole on this on the top round was a little bit different from what we really needed. We've got the center line mark, the intonation point mark. Now when we put my trim in, it lines up exactly in the center. It's really easy to do. You saw how long that took. Then we pop this off, and we're ready to do the pocket route on the back. This already has a spring cavity, of course. Our pocket route template has a line. This is the uh, cavity. Another line that you the, the other. So let us get this in there, and we'll just show you how this is routed to. Let's get this. Away. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, you can see, like I say, there's a line on that pocket route going down here, and that's what he lined up with the spring cavity. And then there's a line going across the front of the hole which lines up with the front of the hole of the spring cavity. So now we've got a different bit that we use also. We use a pretty massive bit on this. It's a quarter inch shank with a one inch diameter bit. I'm trying to get it in the white there so you can see. It's a, and we don't use a bearing on it we have some washers that we put on there to give us m more room. What, what this does is we set the initial depth to go down below the back of the guitar. And you'll see the result in just a minute. There's a question, I think. Yeah, there's a question. I've been trying to get to Jeff Beck, man. You know him? Give him a call for me. Okay, here we go again. This is the pocket route. Now we do one. <clears throat> we do one pass uh, with that bit, and then we drop it down further, and we do another pass. There we go. All right. Now we're going to do another pass around. That's about another quarter inch. Okay, pop that off of there. Now you can see what we did. We went down below the back of the surface and around on this side and across the front even of the spring cavity because the tone block moves forward as well as backwards. It doesn't ever cut any on this side of a strat uh, route that's already in there. Now, there, you saw how long that took. It doesn't take very long. We go back and we seal all this up. And then the next day, we're ready to install a Trim King. And uh, by the way, here's Willie, my faithful tech that does, I couldn't, I couldn't make it without him, man. Willie Smith. Yay! Um, you want to play? Um, so...
<laughs> so buttons on your underwear, I guess. No. Uh, okay, man. Well, any more questions? Uh, I hope everybody wants to try this thing out. I, I wish they were everywhere and you could go try it, but uh, jump on board, man, and help, help me make it the standard of the industry. I mean, wouldn't you rather see guitars coming out with, with something that's stable on it than a whammy bar you have to lock down or not use because it won't stay in tune? This thing really works, you know. It, it still amazes me. Phone number again. And, uh... Yeah, so give us a call. Toll free eight six six three two four six three zero zero. We're on Facebook, TrimKing.com, uh, the website. We're on YouTube. Go to the YouTube site, and you'll see some tuning videos and some different videos that uh, we've put on the YouTube site. Of course, we're on Numubu now. I want to thank Numubu again for this great, great opportunity. I think this is killer. Great way to communicate with people. I never said anything about the pricing. The uh, the list price of the TK1, the Strat style, starts at 179. The the Tele style is 199. The third style is 189. Uh, they street for you know anywhere from a hundred and a quarter around there. <coughs> we uh, we charge hundred and forty dollars for an install on a Strat. A uh, Strat style guitar, we charge uh, $170 for an install on a Tele style guitar. And right now we got a cool deal going. If you want to send us your guitar and buy the unit from us, um, we'll, we'll do it for uh, uh, $200 for the Strat style and $230 for the Tele style. That includes the unit, the install, complete setup, and shipping back to you. <coughs> so give us a call, man. Let's put one on for you. Can you even hear that? Well, the camera's not facing that direction, so. This telly in. This is a pretty cool little guitar here with it on there. It's, uh, I did one not too long ago that, uh, you know, the guy had a Bigsby on it and. Installs, man, 200 bucks for an install on a Strat. Send us your guitar. We'll install the puppy. Uh, and 234 Telly, just like this. We'll fix her up for you, man. And you'll.
really good player, you can make that sound great. Hey, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in today, <clears throat> and uh, hope everybody joins Numubu too, man. This is a cool thing, and uh, what? Yay! We still got a couple of minutes, you know, but. never played it like that, but, uh...